Well, hello and welcome to what is now our 10th uh, Coffee Shop Sunday online worship. And it doesn't seem possible that we've now done 10 of these. Hopefully it won't be too long before we're all back together again physically in Costa Coffee. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the next um, 25 minutes or so. And we're going to start today with a piano instrumental um, kindly played by Gary Hopkins. And this is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And if you have your Singing the Faith hymn book, it is hymn number 20. So I'll hand over to Gary and Jesus Christ is my living hope. Right, hello again. Well, it, today we're really pleased. Annie and I are meeting up again with Jez and Natalie. Um, they were going to say a bit about who they are, uh, but it's absolutely brilliant that you two are part of our Coffee Shop Sunday service. Welcome again. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, do you want to just tell us a bit about where you are uh, and uh, what you do? <laughs> um, <laughs> what do we what do? Your I'm job not is? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a, a minister up in the Bury Circuit in the Bolton Rochdale District in North Manchester. Yeah, I'm, I'm a minister in the Alderman Saddleworth Circuit, so in the Mon Manchester and Stockport District. Mm. Yeah. And so obviously, um, we're, we've both been, I think I've been in Bury now for just short of four years, mm. you've been in Alderman for two. Yep. Um, so um, we, we've obviously been doing all the normal things that ministry entails um, <laughs> in previous life, and then, and then kind of lockdown happened and threw everything up in the air mm. and made life very different yeah <laughs> and both methodists of course oh, oh yeah of course, of course, of course. Of course yeah. <laughs> what other <laughs> options are there <laughs> this is really a story about the, there were these four methodists <laughs> <laughs> now the, anyway. the, can you have four methodists that walk into a bar or is that not appropriate <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on <laughs> spoilers jez yeah <laughs> um 
one of the things that Annie and I found that we got in common with Jez and Natalie is just how what a brilliant um, online presence they have in their neck of the woods yes. and we're kind of addicted to their morning prayer sessions oh, um, <laughs> and uh, they're really good so do you want to tell yeah. us a bit about what you do online of course so um online stuff is something we'd kind of talked about for a long time as something we were, we were contemplating mm. doing but never quite found the time or the or the kind of opportunity to actually make a go of it so um then obviously when lockdown happened and our churches were closed and all the normal things mm. that we would do weren't possible it kind of gave us an opportunity i think to really explore some of that didn't it yeah definitely so um morning prayer as you say we when at the start of lockdown this is kind of a discipline that we developed kind of as a couple in the mornings uh, when we woke up early enough we we do morning prayer um so we thought oh we could you know share this and and have people join in on online using facebook live um at the time it was yeah a great idea we just didn't think lockdown would go on so long right. <laughs> um, so these early starts are killing us off really <laughs> i think it's the kind of thing that when we when we said we'd do it we yeah. kind of maybe anticipated 10 or so people might join yeah. us and because normally if you if you offer some kind of prayer meeting at church you'll be lucky if you get kind of two or three yeah. turning yeah. up and most people kind of giving apologies mm. one way or another but then to find that we're regularly having 35 to 50 mm. people joining us each morning five it's mornings awesome. a week is, is amazing yeah it's a real blessing and it's it's good for us actually because it i think in lockdown it's quite easy to just stay in bed and have a lie-in every day <laughs> yes. but this kind of gets you up and go in and you know really grounds your day with god so mm. yeah that's been a real joy for us as well and then, then there are other things that we've been um doing online as well so at the start of lockdown and um, we we started doing uh, a Bible study online on a Facebook live group and, and had some really good conversations with people mm. through that. We did a, a regular weekly coffee morning um, where again we'd go live on Facebook and just mm. have people chat to us and talk nonsense. In like the you too, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally we do something more serious yeah. like, like, like when you two joined us. And then on Sunday as well? Yeah, we just give worship a go on Sunday. So just a kind of a more talkative conversation rather than a, a sermon. Mm. Um, we attempt to play on our guitar and sing some songs in tune and uh, and just some prayer really so it's, we're quite informal people actually anyway mm. so um the service on a sunday is fairly informal so yeah yeah and, we, and we've kind of experimented with editing that and putting it on youtube and making it available in kind of as many different formats as possible just so that no yeah. one's kind of excluded, excluded from that. there are yeah. options there if people want them yeah that's brilliant wondering have you come across any resistance to online worship um from anyone and and if so how, how do you deal with that or how would we deal with yeah. that yeah it's, it's a difficult one so so our kind of the people who tune in to the stuff on facebook um, there's a really large majority that are actually from jez's patch um from jez's congregations um i've got three more elderly congregations that are kind of allergic to technology just the thought yeah, of it yeah um, in fact someone the other day was like help me find the word for what what she was explaining and the word she was looking for was computer um <laughs> she oh. what a computer was called um so yeah they're not terribly techy um so yeah i think there has been some resistance in terms of um just kind of wanting to come back to, to church because online doesn't work for them or they can't do online mm. um and just being quite I suppose not not terribly negative, but just a bit passive about it, aren't they? They're mm. just kind of, oh yeah, I'm not into that. Oh no, I'm not interested in that. And we we've put it on Twilio, the the kind of phone uh, phone in number. So someone calls yeah, a number, they get the service, uh, and then you know we just get complaints of, oh well, I don't want to sit on the phone and listen to the service. Well, <laughs> we're trying our best. You know, <laughs> it seems to be something that it's um very kind of love it or hate it mm. the, the people that, that do want to engage with it and do yeah. make that effort um really speak really positively about it and actually and how good it is and want mm. to continue this um in some form going forward and um, we've noticed actually a significant or i have anyway a significant number of secret email addresses that people have had for years but never wanted to <laughs> tell anyone because they don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then people that um, would never have gone anywhere near Facebook before this have mm. actually made an account and experimented. 
definitely. Um, just to give it a go and see what happens. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of anyone that's tried it and gone, no. this is horrific. Mm. Um, it tends to be those people that are, are very resistant generally to doing anything online, mm. but then don't want to give it enough of a chance. And yeah. I had a phone conversation with one person from my congregation who's 94, who's got no kind of technological ability whatsoever, yeah. but went round to her daughter's, who's also at the church, and, and watched our service on Sunday for the first time um, this Sunday. And it sounded like she absolutely loved yeah, it. Yeah, it was great, wasn't which, it? Which was brilliant. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is fantastic. I was mm. going to say, um, thinking about what we're doing online at our end and at your end, and when we start thinking about getting back to physical church, uh, getting together, do you do you still think there's a place when we're there for online as well? Hmm. Yeah, I definitely think so. I, I don't know um, how conversations are going with your churches where you are, uh, but when we're talking with our churches, um, there seems to be a, a real desire that if we come back to church, obviously it's going to look different with the social distancing measures. So would we think about having a kind of physical gathering at another time in, in the day on a Sunday so that we can keep going on a Sunday morning online because mm. they want to keep the online, but also if for those who want it, have some in then um, later on in the afternoon. And I suppose it really emphasises actually that church isn't what it used to be for now. So, it, you know, coming at 10.30, it's not going to be the same. So, so come later on. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Definitely. I mean, we've had conversations mm. about how we can just just the the things that we do, how we can keep doing them mm. when when everything does return to normal, um, in its truest sense. And so, doing morning prayer a couple of times a week rather than all five, yeah. and and still doing some kind of online Facebook live worship, mm. but maybe on on a Saturday morning or an evening during the week, so yeah. that we can keep these things going. Um, because yeah. people have been saying that they're really valuable, but in a way that allows us to then do normal ministry things yeah. as well. So things like Lent groups, we found worked really well online. Um, so the Bible study wasn't as popular, I wouldn't say afterwards, but the mm. Lent group, um, it worked well. So I think maybe looking at Lent and a Lenten study for next year um, and actually having that online option anyway, in addition to the physical ones, because people seem keen. Mm, definitely. Mm. And then yeah. both of my churches are exploring what it might mean as well to be able to do live stream services. Mm. So when when we do start meeting again on a Sunday morning, actually being able to stream that on their own Facebook pages mm. so that people can engage with that and see what church looks like before, before they take having the plunge, to risk yeah. crossing the, crossing yeah. the threshold. Mm. Which the fact that to do that is exciting. Maybe a way of uh, recruiting people through mm. through technology as well mm -hmm. to dip their toe yeah. in through through an easy way. But mm -hmm. that's great. I think we're experiencing similar reactions to you and and sometimes being surprised about the people who are maybe getting on in years but still are prepared to give it a go and that's Definitely. really encouraging i love the i love the story of the 94 year old jez that's, yeah yeah i just got a, a <laughs> lovely great. image i mean she's, she's brilliant yeah. anyway she's one of these people who um anytime you try something new would always come at it with the attitude of personally i might prefer old traditional hymns and traditional service mm. but actually I want to come to whatever you're doing and I want to support it because that's how yeah. we might need to worship God in the future. She's, She's amazing. Great. She She's is amazing. great. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I think by and large, most people have been adventurous and given things a go, haven't they really? Mm. And yeah. So that question about resistance, that there is some, but mm. it's quiet. It's quieter voices. Generally it's kind of be encouraged. I think the only really kind of overt criticism we had was not long after we started from someone um, who would fairly regularly found something to complain about but decided that she did she didn't like us doing it together because yeah. the churches wanted to hear from their own minister and not both okay. so, and so we were so like so could your wife not be there on sunday morning <laughs> oh. and i was like yeah fine i'm happy i'll stay in bed fine. <laughs> <laughs> to which the answer was a resounding no as you may have noticed. yeah yeah, yeah. i can yeah. imagine that yeah. okay that, it's really all been yeah positive, yeah honestly. I think that's been our experience on the whole. It's been very, very positive mm. and um, people are pre prepared to give it a go. And I think that, that's yeah. just so encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the other thing, the final thing that I wanted to say was uh, Jez and Nat have kindly agreed to read with Annie one of our um, prayers from Prayers in <laughs> Lockdown, which is, uh, and both of them contributed to this, which we're absolutely delighted about so i'm going to hand over to annie and she's going to explain what, what's going to happen but i'm pleased to know that i'm going to be quiet 
<laughs> uh, yes, I think probably most people in the UK have heard <laughs> of um, <laughs> 19 prayers in lockdown, which was a collaboration um, from 25 people who belong to Coffee Shop Sunday. Um, most who had never met each other. We all met through Coffee Shop Sunday. So it's great. And we've sold how many? Is it? Uh, 1,016. Oh, wow. Um, copies. Yeah. And we've just taken our first order, by the way, today yeah. for 80 of the second booklet. Which is oh, amazing. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Goodness me. Okay, so we're going to read um, the one called Water. And Jez will start, start us off. Let's pray. pray. Inspiring God, your son Jesus taught us that whoever drinks the water he gives us will never be thirsty again. The water we receive from Jesus gives us a spring of water leading to eternal life. Loving Father, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. We ask for safe clean drinking water for all around the globe without the need to walk often back breaking long distances we so often waste what you give us and clean plentiful water is a big example of what we fail to share with all who are in need when we need refreshing we fail to turn to you the only one who can truly quench our thirst Life-giving Jesus, giver of living water to all who thirst, we ask you to give us your life-giving water in this arid time of our lives. Lord, we need you at such a time as this, and we are thankful that you always come to our aid when we call on you. God of the slow, calming streams of water, and yet the crashing, thrashing waves. May we journey with you through the rivers of life, through the rough, stormy seas and through the gentle streams. May we know your presence with us, transforming, healing and making all things new. Loving Father, when we pass through deep waters, you are with us. You let justice roll down like waters and righteousness is your ever-flowing stream. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, and it's absolute joy to see you again. We've not met physically, but I'm sure that's going to happen. One day. One, One day. day. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we always say when we have guests on our online um, services, that it's compulsory you come along, even if just for a free <laughs> coffee in Costa. <laughs> one Sunday afternoon. So if you're in Coventry, we do look forward to that. And if we're in Manchester area, Northwest, we'll, we'll look you up. Yeah, That's definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. We'll take you to Starbucks and, <laughs> you know, be fair. Cause controversy. <laughs> will they accept the cost of gift cards? <laughs> we'll, we'll let you have that argument. <laughs> so thanks ever so much. It's lovely to see you. Keep up all your good work. And for anybody who um, look up the Holy Hackett's, <laughs> Facebook and you can you can see uh, Jez and Nat's uh, morning prayer sessions on Facebook they're well worth it nine o'clock thank you thank you thank you and thank you for inviting us along yeah and now for something completely different Paul Wood led one of our evening coffee shop Sunday prayer sessions and we've got a short recording of that followed by a uh, a song that him and Ian wrote called Beyond These World Walls of Worship, sung by Mike and Debbie. So let's come before God in our prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring before you who you have created us to be. The reason we believe that we were made the reason we get out of bed in the morning, the reason we use the air that you have given us to breathe, to survive, to flourish. And so we hold before you who we are. We pray too for those people that we know and love. 
And as we share prayer together, feel free to name those people before God, either out loud or in the quietness of your own hearts and minds. God you've given us our hearts and minds our whole being to praise and worship you and so tonight we thank you for all that is good for friends and for family we thank you Lord pray for all those who whose lives are changing whether it be part of illness or because of the people that are around them are not well, whether it be because something's happening in their lives um, or the situations around the world that are meaning that employment is not as easy. We pray for each of us as, our, as we try to understand what our role is in the world at the moment, what our role is in our community, what our role is in the church. We pray for those people who know very clearly what their role is, those who are called to care, those who are called to heal, those who are trying to make sure that we continue to be well fed, and for those who are reaching out to the most needy in our society and in the world. So we hold before you those who are struggling, and those who are tired, those who are disillusioned, and those who just need a rest. We bring our prayers to God. So Lord, we bring before you the context we find ourselves in, our homes, the neighbourhoods in which we live, those people that we know and love, those people that we see in the street but don't know the names, those people that we long to see again. And we pray for those are either out loud or in the quietness of our own hearts and minds. Loving and generous God, your word teaches us that nothing can separate us from your love. We read in your word today how you walk alongside us in the darkest of times, listening to our needs, speaking to us in actions and in words, changing our situation and giving us strength to face the world anew. We pray tonight, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. We bring to you the divisions of this world. <coughs> versus white, black versus white, rich versus poor. And even within your church, liberal versus evangelical, Catholic versus Protestant. God of unity, we pray to you this night. Teach us to own our part in the diversiveness of this world. Teach us to sow the seeds of your love. Help us to live lives that show that difference and diversity are beautiful gifts of your creation. Where there is despair, let us sow hope. We bring to you the despair in our world, the things that we've heard in our own prayers, the things of the news, the things in our hearts and minds. We hold before you the increasing uncertainty through the threat of unemployment. Industries not knowing if they're able to operate again. The fear of, for some of going out into the public again. 
God of hope, we pray to you, help us to walk with you as we, as you walked along the Emmaus Road, reawakening hope for those who believed all was lost. Encourage us to walk with others in their despair and reawaken their hope in the light of your resurrection. Amen. So that's the end of our latest online worship from Coffee Shop Sunday, where we meet God in an ordinary place. And I hope there was something there that um, helped you and put you in touch with God. It's um, a shame that we can't be together, but um, our online worship sessions seem to be popular. We do get a number of views on our YouTube channel. And if you would like to make any comments, any suggestions for future services, we're always looking to do something different. So feel free to give us that feedback. And we look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks when we'll be doing our 11th online worship. So in the meantime, hope that God is with you over the next two weeks, keeping you safe, keeping you well. God bless everybody, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.